Good evening, you guys. It's Sunday evening. This is Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and I am glad that you guys are on, for those of you who are on. We'll hang on just one second and make sure that we're going live and that we are transmitting out into the ether zone and that my Comcast doesn't drop me here in the first 30 minutes or so, 10 minutes. I see we've got four folks watching. Hey, Jean, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. All right, so it looks like people are starting to get logged in. I appreciate you taking some time with me on your long weekends, if you have one. I do, so yay. All right, so I hope you guys aren't getting completely disgusted with me. I cannot seem to get away from this Springtime Foils DSP because it's just too cool. Hey, Holly. Hey, Paula and Karen and Arlene. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, Pat, you made it. Good. All right, so this is the card. I gave you a sneak peek this morning. And as you can see, the, the main panel is simply a colored... Um, hey, Fran, thank you. A colored panel. I'm going to show you how to make that. And then I've got a little bit of layered leaves embossed um, vellum here. And a sentiment from the fun Picture Perfect Birthday stamp set. So, we w oh, you want to see the inside? Okay, here's the inside. Um, I did kind of a different treatment. Thank you, Karen. Hi, Denise. How are you? I did a little bit different treatment. I, I actually embossed just about, oh, an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of the bottom of this Whisper White panel uh, in the layered leaves, and then I covered the, the seam area with some more of my uh, Lemon Lime Twist 3 8 inch mini striped white ribbon. So we'll get to that in just a sec. And then, of course, we have a matching envelope. And, ooh, look at that. That's a little sneak peek for all of you paper pumpkin people. If you've already put your February paper pumpkin together, you may recognize that little stamp right there. If not, we'll get to it when we get to it. So let us go ahead. Hi, Lenny. Thank you for joining. I appreciate that. Um, welcome to your first time. I hope it won't be your last. And hey, Sue. Hey, Donna. Thanks for joining. And Donna from Kansas. Hi, Jean. Uh, all of the Sebring ladies, so glad that you could join me. I appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to set this aside, and we're going to play first with, well, let's, let's look at what we have here. Uh, my card base is a basic gray card base. It's four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half, kind of basic. And then I have a piece of the Springtime Foils, DSP, three and three quarters by five. Remember, this is DSP you can get for free right now with a $50 order. And I have the same size of a, of a Whisper White. Hey, Barb, I appreciate you joining. Barbara from South Carolina. This is the same size Whisper White, three and three quarters by five for the inner liner. And then I have two Old Olive mats, um, an eighth of an inch bigger. Uh, so three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. All right, so we're gonna set those aside for now. And put this aside. Now, because it takes a, f a few minutes to color this, uh, I've already kind of gotten us started. So I was playing with the color throwdown challenge this week and it was um, white and gray and lilac and green were the four colors. And so obviously I don't have a lilac stamp and blend. So I decided to play a little jiggy with the with the color scheme. Hi Donna. Hey Brooke. Hey Brooke, how are you? All right, so what I did to start with, I just used the light rich raspberry blend and I've colored all of the flowers. And then I used the light and dark old olive and colored all of the leaves. And you can see that I kind of did light and dark on both leaves. When I was first experimenting with this, you can actually, I'll show you a couple of experimental pieces. Here's actually, this is, you can see the colors. This was a blue one I'd done before. I tried Wisteria Wonder, I tried Perfect Plum, and none of them looked good after I, I gave the black background. So I decided to go with Rich Razzleberry. And once you make it black, it darkens it up enough that I decided to call that kind of lilac. So they're kind of exotic lilacs, let's say. Hey, Angie. 
thank you for joining. So what I've done is I've colored everything once, all of the flowers once, with the light blend. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with the same light blend, and I'm just going to color over a few of the petals again. And this is just adding depth without changing the color. I also experimented with using the dark rich razzleberry and boy you couldn't even squint your eyes and make that be lilac. It just was way too dark. So this particular color scheme I decided was good enough, close enough to be eligible for the challenge. And we'll see if it really was. All right, so there's really not rhyme or reason to how I picked the blend, the uh, petals that I was gonna make darker than the others. I just was kind of, you know, coloring, because I could. It's kind of nice, we talked last week, which tells me I've used this DSP way too much, I'm sorry. But I seem to be a little obsessed by it. I can't, I can't stop using it. I just can't stop using it. But this has a very nice finish on it. It's real smooth and it colors nice. And so it's easy to just color along and enjoy that. So I hope you guys have had a good long weekend so far. And how wonderful is it? And I'm just going to answer my own question because it's completely rhetorical. The answer is it's totally wonderful for it to be Sunday night. And I do not have the Sunday evening blues because <laughs> I don't have to work tomorrow. And I am so happy about that. Now, I know some of you are thinking, my goodness, Mary, what a pansy you are. You work from home. How can you have the Sunday evening blues? I know it's completely crazy. I shouldn't. It doesn't even make sense. It indicates that I'm spoiled, which is true. I, I could have to get up and put makeup on and do my hair and, oh my God, maybe even wear pantyhose. Oh, that would be bad. All right, so you can see why I did some of this ahead for you. I know, Karen. I know. I am very lucky. I am very lucky. I know this. And yet I still get the Sunday evening blues. Why is that? I. It doesn't even make sense. If somebody can explain that logic to me, I'd be really, really glad to hear it because it doesn't make sense even to me. But I do. About three o'clock on Sunday, I just start getting pissy and ill as a hornet, I tell you. My poor husband is like, oh boy, it's the Sunday afternoon blues. Yeah. Now, it's not a terribly big difference in all of these petals, but it's enough. And after we get the black on, thank you, Twyla. I am looking forward to that. You are right, Jean. Being retired is luckier. If I could just make somebody pay me more money to be retired, that would be awesome. I'm working on that plan. I just haven't quite got there yet. All right, so there's that. We're going to do that. Call that good. Except what I'm going to do is I have a piece ready to go for my envelope flap. So let's just go ahead and color that now, and it'll be all ready to go. And we'll blacken it up, too, at the same time. Hi, Julie. I'm glad you made it, girl. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. All right. You guys enjoying celebration? I hope you are. It's kind of a fun time of year. Um, I enjoy. I like getting free things. I mean, show me somebody who doesn't like getting free things, and I will show you a person who's lying to themselves because everybody likes free. Everybody likes free. And I hope for you guys who are not demonstrators yet that you are considering it right now because this is the perfect time of year. Actually, y'all, to be quite honest with you, I'd wait until the first week in March. You want me to tell you why? Who already knows why? I'll give you a few seconds to ponder that. Who knows why during celebration, the beginning, 
of March would be a perfect time to join. I'm going to look away from my coloring and see if anybody knows. Hi, Amy. Glad you could make it. Hey, Sue. And Ann, appreciate you joining. All right, I don't see anybody with the answer, so I'm going to tell you. So when you join Stampin' Up!, you have until the end of your first full, full three months to main, to get your first $300 quota to stay active. So that means if you join that first week in March, you get all of March, you get April, May, and June. So you are active until the end of June regardless, or as we like to say in the military, irregardless, of how much you spend or don't spend. You will be active until the end of June, at least. Well, guess what comes out for pre-order in May? Mm -hmm. Say it with me, the 2018-2019 annual catalog. So you join in the middle of Mar at the beginning of March, you get your free stamp sets, two extra stamp sets on top of your starter kit, right? So pay $99, you get $125 worth of goodies, and you get an extra two free stamp sets on Stampin' Up! And it can be any ones that you want at all, no matter how much they cost. They are up for grabs. So you get those, and then you get essentially four months, thank you, Rosalie, essentially four months to get your $300 sales in to stay active. You'll get your opportunity to pre-order the new catalog. And if at the end of June, you don't wanna keep going, you just say, see ya. And you keep all your pre-order stuff, cause I know you're gonna pre-order. Why wouldn't you pre-order with a 20% discount? Of course you would pre-order. Of course you would pre-order. And you'd probably buy some more goodies from the annual catalog when it came out on the 1st of June, right? With your 20% discount. So probably you'd end up being active because you would have spent the money. I mean, I know I certainly would have. Wouldn't take, wouldn't take me a half a heartbeat to hit $300. Especially considering that you, you buy $300, but you pay 240 because of your discount. So... Just putting it out there, folks. First week in March, I think it's time to pull the trigger. For those of you who've been thinking about it, pull the trigger. All right, I'm about done with that. Now, this piece is kind of an oddly shaped piece. You're more than welcome, Stevie. Um, Ro Robbie, Stevie, Robbie, good Lord. Um, this is the piece that I'm going to use for my envelope flap, so it's kind of oddly shaped, and I'm just going to set it aside. Okay, now we're going to do the magic. And for the first time ever, I'm actually going to protect my work service so I don't have ink everywhere. Are you ready? Hi, Denise. Most of us are our best customers for a long time. All right, now, you ready? This is my Memento Black ink pad. And I'm just scraping it along there. And boy, is that some kind of ugly. That's ugly right there. But it's going to be pretty in just a second. This is a good time to get your fingers inky, folks. You're going to get inky. Actually, Amy, I guess that's right. Now would work, too, because you would just be pending in June, right? All right, so I'm going to ink that like that. And then I'm going to take another paper towel like a so. You can see I've already done this and I'm just wiping this off. Mm. All right, still active in June then. So y'all sign up today, sign up now. Go, go, go. Okay. So there's that. Now, if you wanted it darker, just rub it down again and you'd be ready to go. But I like that. Remember my challenge this week has gray in it, so I'm not gonna darken it up. But I am gonna do my envelope flap piece here right quick while I have it out and everything is messy. 
I just want to be sure I get enough. Because I can tell you doing this after you've already put it on your envelope. Ooh, not so bueno, people. You don't want to even try it. Okay. All right, so that is ready to go. And that's all there is to that. And you go from having a light colored piece of DSP to a perfectly colored one, dark at any color that you need. And you remember I did last week, we did crumb cake. So there's lots of ways to make this DSP do exactly what you want it to do. All right, so let us tidy up here just a minute. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you, Karen. All right, I'm going to toss that, and then I'm going to wipe my fingers off, because you know what happens if you're using light-colored stuff and you have black on your fingers? Guess what? It's like my downfall. Black and white together is kryptonite for me. It's like having a white t-shirt on. Blech. Okay, now, just to remind us where we're at, this is what we are aiming for. So next up, I'm going to start building my card front. And I'm going to go ahead and fast fuse this to my old olive um, mat. All right. I'm gonna try to get it sort of straight, something approximating straight. All right, there we go. I don't think it would ever stay black, Angie, unless you just, maybe if you left it longer, it would get dark. I don't know that it would ever get completely black, but, you know, the worst that would happen is you just keep adding color and then, you know, and then, you know, see what you get. I'll tell you what I'll do, because I like y'all. Watch this. We'll do a little experiment right here right quick little experiment. I've got a piece that I use to make the envelope flap of my prototype. Who was too sc scared to try what? Right, the ink doesn't really stick. You can see, I'm going to push this up here like this. You can see that where the blends are, it's darker. It's kind of like vintageized it, but it's not stuck over it. So let's see what happens if we just scrape the bead devil out of that. That's pretty dark. And now I'm gonna wait a few beats. How many beats? Well, let's just do a couple of three. We'll just let it kind of soak in a minute and then see what we get here. This is just an experiment. Okay, that's darker yet, right? All right, let's see what we get. You guys could do it. It's paper, people. It's just paper, I promise. And you can get another whole nother pack free. And oh, by the way, you get like four sheets of each design, three sheets of each design in the pack. So you got a lot of room to play. Don't be afraid of the... Do not fear the paper. Do not fear the ink. Okay, here we go. One more try and we'll see how that goes. It's going to get pretty dark, but I think it's probably always going to be a shade of gray. That's what I think. This is just my opinion, but I think it's always going to be gray. Alrighty. Yeah, the darker shade is nice too, huh, Amy? That's pretty. I really like how this looks colored like this. All right, let's see, where was it? Okay, now I have a piece of vellum cardstock and it is one and a half inches wide by three and three quarters, the same as my card front. And I'm going to use a little bit of my fine tip liquid glue to adhere that. And I'm going to make sure I want the embossed side up. So really all I'm doing is I'm just putting some of the liquid glue kind of coincident with the, the middle of the panel here. Because I'm going to co cover it with 
with ribbon. I'm just gonna lay that right on like so. And hold it down a second to make sure it adheres. Stick my little pin back in. Now if I can do that left-handed, what will I give myself? There we go, I did it. Okay, now, some Lemon Lime Twist 3 8 inch mini ribbon. I'm going to cut a little piece of that. Uh, I'm not sure what that question was. Is that because the paper is not pure white? Um, repeat that question, please. Not real sure what I'm attempting to answer here. Okay, now I'm just going to turn this over and going to run a little piece of fast fuse on both edges, she says, and then the fast fuse is going to do like fast fuse does and be persnickety. Goodness. Okay. All right. I'm going to cover that like that. Okay, and there we go. So that's the start. Go make sure it's straight, because straighter is better than crookedier, like that. Right. Okay. Now, next up, we're going to punch a couple of leaves out of a piece of foil. We're going to use copper foil to match the embossing on the paper. Now, on my prototype, I also punched two vellum leaves with the leaf punch. And I could do that again, but I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of some fun things in the February paper pumpkin. And even after you get done making your paper pumpkin, cards, which I've already finished, you're going to have some leftovers. So I'm going to use these because they're fun and because I can. So I'm just going to pull a couple of those out. Aren't those pretty? And a couple of these little berry thing do has. This one's going to have a few more things on it than my prototype. So I dragged that black ink on the pretty. Almost stroked out. <laughs> For, I'm sorry. How did I discover that I could color the background? Well, Amy showed us a card that she had. Well, she gave us a tip at our meeting last week that said that, and she'd seen it on a demonstrator's website. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. Amy, who's that person? Who was that person? I don't remember. Uh, not really that coy. Hmm. Okay, so while Amy is answering that, if she can remember, I'm going to cut one of these copper foil with the leaf punch. Okay, here we go. Linda Heller. Linda Heller did it. And she's a pretty, pretty smart lady, so there you go. All right, so we've got some copper foil and some leaves and some copper thread and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wrap a few loops of this copper thread like this and by a few I mean you know four let's say it's four like that and that one went candy wampus get back in there get back in there like that right there Okay. All right. And that looks about right. So let's cut that. Okay. It's getting harder for me to see. Pretty soon I'm going to have to have like a jeweler's loop, I'm afraid, to be able to see, which is embarrassing. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take a glue dot. Let go of me, and I'm gonna stick it right about there. 
And we're just gonna stick that foil into the glue dot, just like that. All right. And then I'm gonna take my liquid glue. Yeah, it's kind of a booger. Uh, it's getting to where my arms need to be longer so that I can uh, see what I'm working on, which is sad. And then I'm just gonna stick some of these paper pumpkin leaves. Now, really, if you don't have the paper pumpkin for this month, that's fine. Just cut some with the uh, vellum, just cut some vellum cardstock leaves with the leaf punch and do the same exact thing I'm doing. Um, if you don't have the paper pumpkin, I would I would be trying to get signed up. The paper pumpkin kits, the last four or five of them have been really, really nice. And so I'm thinking, I'm really looking forward to the March one, which is a special kit with a special gift in it um, for the fifth anniversary. Okay, I think that's enough of those. And then we'll put the copper one over the top of them. Right over the top of them, just like that right there. Just like that right there, uh-huh. I don't care who you are, that's cute. Okay. Now, we'll set that aside to dry for just a minute. Of course, my fast fuse on the back is going to be very fast fusey. Set that aside to work. And then we're going to stamp our sentiment on a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Yeah. yeah, if I find a really good jeweler's loop, I'll let you know. Uh, I th that could be like the clue that it might be time to, you know, maybe do something different as a hobby. If you have to use a jeweler's loop, you might want to find a different hobby. What am I looking for? Look at that. I can't even find my stamp set. Goodness. Okay. We're going to get this out, and it's the... Happiest of birthdays to you. Happiest of birthdays to you. If I try to find another hobby, it probably shouldn't be singing. Okay, and I've got my squishy because this is a photopolymer, and I'm using basic gray archival ink. <laughs> no matter how crookedy it gets, I'm going to just keep stamping. Okay, sounds like a plan. All right. I'm holding it down a little bit. I think my ink pad's a little dry. I need to re-ink it. Ah, good. That'll work. And then I'm going to cut it out with a stitch-shaped framelits oval, like so. And murmur amongst yourselves. I'm pretty sure you know how to cut a stitch-shaped framelit. And I'm back, and we have one each sentiment. Now, all I'm gonna do is take some dimensionals, some dimensionals, and we're gonna pop that up over the top. An, a lamp with a magnifier, now that could do the trick. Yeah. Pretty soon I'll be having a magnifier to see and hearing aids to hear. Mm -mm. Well, hey, if I can still hear Amy talking on our meetings and I can still see the stamp, we'll be good to go, right? All right, here we go. <laughs> I have a dazer, a dazer, what is that? Is that a lighted up magnifier? Okay. Yeah. We're just gonna stick this a little bit shy of center because the sketch I was playing with did the same. So we'll do that like that. And then I'm gonna cut a length, another length of my ribbon. And we're gonna do a fobo, a fobo. right here, and all you do for a fobo is tie it 
around the first piece of the ribbon. Alrighty. I do still have many of my teeth. I have a few that are, you know, crafted from porcelain, but that's okay too. They still chew as evidenced by my girth. Okay, so I've got my Fobo, and then one last little thing, I'm going to get an old olive. Here's a little tip for you guys, in case you haven't seen it before. The, um, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I can't tell the difference between old olive and always artichoke, and if I start getting my, um, my enamel shapes mi mixed up, then I'm kind of in a, in a world, you know what I'm saying? So what I did is when I opened the pack, I write the name of the color on the back of each of the little acetates, and then I just keep them in a baggie. When all else fails, use a baggie, right? All right, we're just gonna put an old olive heart right there. And that, ladies, is the card front. I'm gonna set it aside, and we will make our innards, the innards of our card. And I will remind you what that's going to look like here. Just a second. So, I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Same size as the card front, so three and three quarters by five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate my embossing folder. Hang on just a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... As I did with the vellum, I'm going to use the Layered Leaves Dynamic Embossing Folder, okay? And I'm not going to show you this other than to show you how I'm setting it in the folder, okay? So I just want it to be about that far up the bottom. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. So then when we pull it out of the folder, the bottom three quarters or an inch is embossed with those beautiful leaves. And now we're going to mat it on our old olive mat. Good Lord. With some more fast diffusing, fasting fusing. Some more fasting fusing. Oh, thank you, Jean. That's very sweet. That's very sweet of you to say. All right, so we're going to put that on there, and then we're going to repeat the ribbon treatment. put it in our card base, and we're almost done. Uh. All right, remember this was a basic gray card base. I know, Paula, that one is one of my very, very favorite, favorite teeths. That one in the basket weave. All right, so we're just gonna stick that in there like so. And then we'll use some uh, dimensionals to pop the front on. And I'm going to use my extra here, like so. Okay. Yes. I 
probably should have gotten a new pack so it wouldn't take me so long. But I know how much you guys enjoy watching me snip little pieces of Stampin' Dimensionals apart. Because that's some paint drying. Speaking of paint drying, have you guys watched any snowboarding on the Olympics? And I am not saying that is paint drying. That is the coolest stuff I've ever watched. I cannot believe those guys do that. I couldn't even stand up on a snowboard, let alone... <sighs> I love when they, they turn it sideways and they stand at the top of the hill and then they just stand there like this and then when they're ready, they go, Phew. I'm like, dude, I'd have been on my butt <laughs> before I even got to the top. That's crazy. And I saw this special the other day on HBO about a kid named Mark McMorris, I think. He's a Canadian snowboarder and he keeps getting he keeps getting hurt. He had this a terrible accident where he broke his femur and then he was in the Olympics. And then he had an even worse accident where he, he jumped off of a hill and landed and hit a tree. I mean, like, smacked a tree, broke all sorts of stuff. His collarbone, his ribs, his leg, his arms. He had a concussion. He was up there for like an hour and a half before they could get the life flight to him. He was in a coma for two days, and now he's in the Olympics again, a year later. It's crazy. It is crazy. I just, I am, you can't see me, but I am bowing in awe to those guys. And then I compare it to curling, and I think, mm, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. The, where, and I love how, thank you, Jean, um, your four-year-old great-granddaughter can snowboard. Mm, that's because they don't have any bone breaking. Their, their little bones are, are so soft. Also, they have no fear at all. I just, yeah. They, they put things on their, I learned this the other day, they put things on their ankles that measure how high they go above the top of the, when they're doing in the half pipe. And so that's part of how they're scored is how high they jump. I guess Sean White jumps like 16 feet above the top of the tube. It is insane. It, I love watching it, but oh my goodness. I can't even imagine. Julie, don't let her do jumps. Oh yeah, okay, so skeleton, same thing. Strap, put yourself on this little, yeah, uh-huh, and go head first down 80 miles an hour. I don't think so, mm-mm. Not this girl. All right, folks, so that is our card. And you can see we have the pretty treatment on the inside with the embossed image and the ribbon. And let's go ahead right quick and get an envelope. Apparently I was not completely ready. I was flabbergasted by the snowboarding. Now, I pulled a little stamp. I'm going to show you this. Have you guys done your, your paper pumpkin yet? Have you done your paper pumpkin yet? No? Nope? Okay. Well, here is the sheet that comes in the paper pumpkin. And this is one of my favorite sets. I love this kit. This is the stamp set that comes. Let me put it on something so you can see. It's got wonderful sentiments and some flowers. And then these little tiny sentiments. And let me show you some of the cards. I'm going to post these probably on Monday, Wednesday. But look, you make nine cards. Three of them are celebrate. And this is fun. This is a, this is a sticker that goes over the top of that paper. And then you pop it on with dimensionals and you stamp these pretty card fronts. And then this one says friend. And can you see the little sentiment? Hello, sweet friend. And here's celebrate your awesomeness on vellum banners that are provided. And then thank you so much. How pretty is this set? I just love it. So when I needed a little flower, thank you, Carol. Dude, try embossing on the inside. Try embossing on the inside. You'll like it. When I needed a little flower, I saw that little flower right there. And so I decided to repeat it, use it for the front of my envelope. And so I'm just stamping that in basic gray archival ink, like that. And we'll let it dry a hot second. 
while I search for my stamp and the jig plastic. Here it is. We'll stick it inside the envelope so that I can color with my blends. Uh, and of course, I'm lucky to get mine in a reason. Oh yeah, Donna, yeah. Well, hopefully it'll arrive. I'm gonna use my light Rich Razzleberry Stampin' Blend to color my flower. It's not the exact same flower as the flower on the springtime foils, but I think it's close enough. It's floral and pretty, right? It's pretty. Okay. And then we'll just use the light old olive for the leaves. And maybe I'll use my daffodil delight for the middle. Okay. And there, that's all we're going to do on the front of this one. We'll pull out our Stampin' Med Jig sheet. I put that in there to protect because the Stampin' Blends, as you know, bleed through. So you're going to want to protect the back of your envelope. Now we'll find that piece of DSP that we colored at the beginning. And we're going to put it on as our envelope. What did you stick inside the envelope before you colored? Oh, it's the um, plastic piece from the Stampin' Med Jig. So it just it happens to fit perfectly in the A2 envelopes, she says, and then can't get it in there. Trust me, it does. It really does. No, I'm not even kidding. There it goes. Yeah. Okay. Now, the only trick is, is if you are, don't stamp with that in there, because sometimes there's a ridge there, and you have to be kind of careful. So just stick it in after you've stamped, but before you color with your Stampin' Blends. All right, so we're going to just use a little bit of the white Tombow on the envelope flap. Like so. And then we'll stick our colored piece on right after sticking our thumb in the ink. Mm -hmm. All right. Lay that down like that. Got a little bit carried away there. Don't need a lot of the glue, folks, because it will squish out everywhere. Oh, Paula, that's sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Jean, Angie, and Linda. I appreciate that very much. All right. And here we go. Just give this a quick fussy cut. All right. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. That's card making Muzak right there. All right, and there we go. One each. Happy birthday card. And got a little extra use out of my new paper pumpkin goodies and the new Springtime Foils DSP. So what you should learn today is Color that foil, color that paper, ink it up, make it any color you need it to be. Alrighty? Alright, so I certainly do appreciate you spending time with me tonight, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.